Hello, my name is Michael Rather from the Digital Photography Connection. And in this exclusive PSD Touch video, I'm going to be talking about how to reduce image noise using Photoshop. When we talk about digital noise, what exactly are we referring to? Well, digital noise in an image can be represented by graininess in that image. And we've got a couple of different types of graininess that we might end up seeing. First, we might see a bunch of multicolored speckles or pixels in our image, and we refer to that as color noise. Or we might see some white or gray speckles in the image, which we will be referring to as luminance noise. And we're going to be showing you in this tutorial how to be able to correct for both of those. Now, this image on the screen looks like it's doing fairly well. However, it has a whole bunch of color noise in it. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. I'm going to grab the zoom tool down here in the toolbar, and I'm going to just zoom into this area right down here. And as I do, you can start to begin to see all of these multicolored speckles that are going on in the image. Now, these speckles are what we refer to as color noise. I can even look up in the sky, and as I get up in the sky, you can kind of see that there are blue and pink dots here or noise going on in our image. And that is, again, color noise that we need to fix. I'll go ahead and zoom back out. Let's look at our second image here, and I'm going to zoom in on this image. Once again, the image looks like it's doing fairly well. However, under close inspection, we're going to come in, and all of a sudden we see some of those white or gray digital noise areas. And again, we call this luminance noise, and we've got ways to be able to fix these independently. Now, it's important to note that when you fix your noise in your image, you're going to go ahead and end up softening the image if you're not careful. So we need to figure out how we're going to get a careful balance for eliminating the noise in our image without detracting from the sharpness. Or we might actually have to go back in and add a little extra sharpness into the image. Now, you can't fix noise directly inside of Photoshop, or there's not a really good way to do that. What we need to do is take our images into Camera Raw. Now, if you happen to shoot your images in the RAW format, you're automatically going to be taken into Camera Raw when you open those images into Photoshop. But if you happen to shoot your images in a different format, as you see here on the screen, I've got some JPEG images. We're going to need to open these images up into Camera Raw. And so I'll show you how to do that. So first, let me go ahead and just close these two images out. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can open JPEG images into Camera Raw. Now, I happen to be working in the Windows version of Photoshop, Photoshop CS5. And so things are going to be a little bit different with some of the earlier versions of Photoshop. Now, what I need to do is come up under the File menu, and I need to drop down to Open As. If you happen to be working on a Mac and you're working in Photoshop CS5, you can just go to open. You won't even see open as. If you're working on a Mac and you're working in an earlier version of Photoshop, you're actually going to have to go through bridge in order to open your image into Camera Raw. But I happen to be working in Photoshop CS5 in Windows, and so I'm going to come here to open as. And when I do, I'm going to get this dialog box. Now, I've got a folder here with the two images that we're going to be working on. And I need to select which image or both images. But for the time being, I'm just going to select this very first image. And right down here, right under the name file name, there is a dialog here called Open As. And I want to make sure that I pick Camera Raw. And I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Open. And now our JPEG image is going to be opened up into Camera Raw. Additionally, if I had a raw image, I wouldn't have to go through that. If I opened my raw image up into Photoshop, it would automatically come into Camera Raw. It is also important to note that since I'm working in Photoshop CS5, that means I'll be working in Camera Raw version 6. And there are some differences between Camera Raw version 6 and some of the earlier versions of Camera Raw. 
Now, in order to conduct our noise reduction, we actually need to get into the details panel. And if we come to the set of right panels, the second icon that we see here is detail. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to go ahead and see my details panel. Now, this is where you're going to see a difference if you happen to be working in an earlier version of Camera Raw you're not going to see the sliders for luminous detail or contrast, nor will you see a color detail slider. You're only going to get the luminance and color sliders under noise reduction. It's also important to note that in this panel, we have both sharpening and noise reduction. And that's going to mean that also as we start to employ our noise reduction on our image, it may soften up a bit requiring us to do a little bit of adaptive sharpening, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Now in order to apply noise reduction to our image, it's always best to try to zoom into your image at least 100%. And right down here at the lower left hand corner of our window, I've got a zoom tool selector and I'm just going to click on that and select 100% and that's going to bring me in 100% to the image and I can see all of the multicolored speckles going on here in the image. I'm going to hold the space bar down in order to change to the hand tool here because I also want to show you this mountain just in all the variations of color. Now obviously I hope your images aren't going to have this much color noise in them. I specifically picked this image because it did. And what we want to do now is go ahead and start to try to minimize some of the color noise without losing some of the sharpness and detail of the image. Now since we're working with color noise, we want to come down to our color slider here. And right now we have no color noise reduction applied to the image. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the slider all the way to the right just to show you the elimination of all of that colored area, those colored speckles going on in the image. And the color detail slider is moved to its default position of 50. I'll go ahead and take that down. And as I take that to zero, you're going to see the images getting very soft and the sharpness. We've just lost all kinds of sharpness in the image. So what I'm going to do is leave my detail slider set back to 50, which is the default. And I'm going to move the color slider all the way to the left once again. And what I want to do is just start moving the slider until I see that some of that color noise begin to disappear. Now hopefully you won't have to move your slider quite as far as I'm moving this slider right now. But again, I have a lot of color noise going on in the image. You can also check other parts of your image once again by just holding down the space bar. That's going to change your cursor into the move tool here, the hand tool, and we can just pan through the image. Now I do see some luminance noise going on in this image. And, but we have successfully eliminated at least the color noise. If we want to see our before and after, we can just tap the P key on the keyboard or you can just click here on this check mark next to the word preview to toggle before and after. And again, you can see that we're at least starting to fix some of that color noise. Now as far as the luminance noise goes, then we can come up to our other slider here under luminance. Once again, by default, it's set to zero and I can go ahead and bring that in. Now as I do, you're going to start seeing some of the luminance noise disappear from the image. And you may have also noticed that the luminance detail slider went from 0 to 50. So once we have luminance down to 0, we don't have any default settings in detail or contrast. But as soon as we begin to move this up, you'll notice that the default of 50 on luminance detail moves into position. So I'll go ahead and move it to what I think is an acceptable area. And then if I need to start bringing some more detail back into the image, I can go ahead and start increasing some of the detail slider. Or if I want to affect some of the luminous contrast to help sharpen the image back up, I can move that as well. Now in this image, I'm not going to be able to completely eliminate all the luminance noise going on in the image because we've just got way too much here in this image. But once again, I don't think you're going to start seeing some of the images you're working on contain as much noise as we have here in our image. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to double click here on the hand tool. 
that's going to reset the image and I can go ahead and start looking back at the image here at the overall effect. Now I do want to zoom in once again here and I want to start checking some of the areas up for sharpness because if we need to start bringing any detail back in, we can obviously move our detail sliders, either our luminance detail or our color detail, but at this point in time we can also begin to sharpen the image. But we want to make sure that we're at least zoomed in at 100% if at all possible to be able to look at the areas that we're going to be trying to sharpen. I'll move this back out here to about 100%. And then if we need to apply some sharpening, we can go ahead and to begin to do that. Now, last month we produced a video for Net Tuts on professional sharpening. And we're not going to be covering sharpening in this tutorial. But if you'd like to find out how to professionally sharpen your images, you might refer back to that other premium tutorial. Well, that concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you for joining us. And once again, my name was Michael Rather from the Digital Photography Connection.